Okay, let's go ahead and call the um, the meeting of the December seventh meeting of the Common Council um, to order. And looks like we just lost Gail. And since this is a virtual meeting, we'll move directly to the roll call. Uh, Clerk Treasurer Aldrich, will you do the roll call, please? Gail Connor, present. Sandra Gora. Present. Spencer Kingry. Present. Cody Nelson. Present. And Mike Isley. I don't see Mike on here yet. Uh, the first order of business. Is uh, the reading of the minutes from the November 2nd regular um, regular meeting. Uh, that are presented here for approval. Are there any additions, any subtractions, deletions, or amendments to this set of meetings? If not, is there a motion to approve? I move that we accept the minutes from the November 2nd meeting of the city council. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second by Sandra Flora. All those in favor will do this by roll call since this is a virtual meeting. Gail Connor? Aye. Sandy Flora? Yes. Mike Isley still is not here. Spencer Kingery? Aye. Woody Nelson? Woody apparently got dropped off. Hang on a second. Here he comes. I don't know what happened, but I vote yes for that previous motion. It was uh, to approve the minutes <laughs> from November 2nd. <laughs> Thank you, Cody. <laughs> so for unfinished business uh, tonight, uh, we will have the third and final reading of proposed ordinance 2020-9 and ordinance regarding unsafe buildings. The proposed ordinance passed on first reading on March 2nd was tabled on August 3rd. It was passed on second reading with amendments on November 2nd. Is there a motion to pass ordinance 2020-9? Um, I move to pass ordinance 2020-9 on third reading. We have a second. A second. Cody, was that you? Yeah. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Uh, Gail Connor? Aye. Sandy Flora? Yes. Spencer Kingery? Aye. Lee Nelson? Aye. Motion carries. The next order of business or is proposed resolution 2020-19 regarding the common council meeting schedule for 2021. Is there a motion to pass resolution 2020-19? I move that we would pass 2020-19. The second? I'll second that. Thank you, Mary, with the second. Do we need discussion? Mm. I would say, is does anybody think moving it to 6.30 start time would be a good idea? I know that uh, a lot of the Board of Works meetings have been running over, which it is what it is. Um, maybe they need more time. Uh, does not help hurt us to maybe get it started a little later? Just a thought. 
It was originally at 6.30, and they asked to move it a little bit earlier. Okay. Um, we're going to ask the Board of Works to consider moving their meetings to maybe 5.15, so they have more time. I guess I, the... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. If I could weigh in on that, um, I think even it was at 7. Gail, correct me if I'm wrong. I think at one point it was at 7 for quite some time. I think it's pretty hard. <laughs> Um, when you're, you know, just get the two hour window for a lot of us that stick around. Um, what if maybe Board of Works bumped up 15 minutes, even 10, I mean, 10 minutes would be a funky time, but maybe 15, is that um, gonna mess uh, up with uh, Mr. Bradshaw or Mr. Yates' work schedule? I don't think Dick is still on, but Cameron indicates it would be okay with him and I don't have a problem with it. Leanne, is that um, acceptable to you? Yes. I mean, it's just a thought. It's not. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of wanted people to give me their thoughts on it. Yeah, they do need more time. Well, and then, yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. It, it plays a little part for me and my job. It might give us a little more time getting here. 6.30 would work for me as well. I'm game for whatever. I actually have a shift partner now, so I'll be able to take off time as needed. I'm fine with whatever we do. So I would motion that we amend 2020-19 to be 6:30 across the board instead of six, and pass as following. Does that work for you, and Mackenzie? I will. I will defer to you all. I I prefer not to have it start late because when we have those con really long meetings, well, we were finding ourselves there until 9 p.m. I mean, it's it gets and we're all working a full day. Anyone yeah. that has kids, it gets a little difficult when we're here that late. But if that's what everyone wants, that's what I'll do. Mm. Let's just keep it at six for now. Then we can okay. stay in. Or send, or send my motion. Sorry, Cody, I'm not trying right. to be a... <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, if I, if I, uh, I might just have to be late sometimes next year. Mark, it's all right. We'll figure it out. We'll probably all be virtual anyways, so... Honestly, probably, so... For, for quite a while, I'm afraid. Okay, so we'll leave it at 6 o'clock, I think, is the consensus for now. And uh, uh, on the motion to pass... Uh, Gail? Aye. Sandy Flora? Aye. Spencer Kingery? Aye. Cody Nelson? Aye. Motion carries. Next is a proposed resolution 2020 20 regarding a second round of small business resilience grants that will utilize the remaining $110,520 of OPRA funding. Uh, to help the city of Delphi provide assistance for local businesses impacted by the COVID-19 public health emergency. Is there a motion to approve the resolution 2020-20? I motion that we approve it. I got some questions about it. So we can quash that. Is there a second? Second. Spencer Kingery with the motion and um, Cody with the second. Discussion. We're going to go in order or can just go whatever? You go first because you made the motion. Okay. So um, in regards to opening up for this second round, are we going to keep, would this be something we keep the same um, requirements as the first time or are we going to open it up even further so we can include some of the other businesses that may or may not have um, met the criteria as far as um, either like either employee size or just not getting it, their applications in on time. I What's think that? we discussed um, going to a full-time equivalency for employees so the number um, evens out to not exclude somebody who has more part-time employees and um, that I know that was something we discussed the last time because we did um, that did play into a factor for one 
Okay. So, to be clear, would that be then 25 F full time equivalents rather than 25 employees? We can we can do 25. We can change that number. But I, I know that I've spoken with those business owners, and if we do FTE, um, then they will qualify. I'm okay with that. If you want to do it that way. I feel like since we already got, you know, we already did the first round of it, and then we went through and got reimbursed with the, the grant money, and then um, this would, you know, we got the money there. Let's go ahead and open it up and see if we can help more, you know, as many businesses as we possibly can with this. Was there anything about the application process that you all required round one? that was overly cumbersome when reviewing that you don't think was necessary and could eliminate for round two or um, all of that you feel is still necessary? I know, I know Gail, you mentioned some very large amount of hours that you spent a lot, just you yourself on, on reviewing it. So I wondered if there was something that made the review process tedious that wasn't necessary. Um, I think this time, Mayor Rowling had expressed that Curbsy was going to be doing the review process, so it was a little more consistent across the board. Um, I, I just know that I felt it was necessary to follow the guidelines that were laid out to us, and it, probably because there were so many applicants, but um, I think with Curbsy doing the review process, then that doesn't come to play. And I like to leave it consistent with the requirements that we use the first time around. Um, that would probably eliminate some paperwork for some businesses. Is this so? We're not going to be the ones reviewing it this go around. It'll be Curbsy reviewing all this. To be, clear, to be clear, what Curbsy will be reviewing will will ask for the income verification forms to be submitted with the applications. So while we will send them the applications they're interested in the income verification and that's the portion that they will be concerned with. So reviewing of the and ranking of the applications which will be up to council uh, unless you have other uh, plans as to how you would like to accomplish that. So we'll be reviewing it and then Kirsty will be reviewing the income verification. Are they grading it? via like any like the rubric that we kind of had or what how they're going to be doing it they are solely looking for uh, eligibility requirements okay to qualify for yeah. grant funds okay did people submit what they were supposed to so they're they're looking at are the application pieces complete and um, then uh, beyond that they'll Purely be looking at the income verification forms to determine eligibility for the OPRA funding. Okay. And I just for just... like some, I'm oh, sorry, Gail, go ahead. Go ahead, go right ahead. Um, for some easy clerical aspects of it, or however, I'm not wording this correctly, but is there any way we can have the applications have to be typed out so we can actually read some of it? Because some of the handwriting is not very good and it makes it harder for us to. Uh, read it. So I don't know if that's something we can just they have to either um, they can fill out the PDF when you send it to them or they can print it off from you know making an award document and print it off. But I think it'd be easier for us to read and go through instead of trying to decipher handwriting on some of them. You want to make that a requirement or a, a strong suggestion? Strong suggestion, so we don't have to change the requirements. You can emphasize that email when you send out the uh, packets to businesses. I think if if that's the case that we're going to be doing the evaluating, then I think we need to make sure that we're all following the requirements of the rubric. I know there were some comments made prior that. Um, points were given so that people would get the full amount of money. Um, and I think that we need to make sure that we are following the requirements of our um, filling out of the rubric so that it's consistent across the board. Um, 
also want to ask because at the last meeting we talked about contacting businesses and finding out about needs. So I just wanted to ask each member of the council who you contacted and what you what you found out about needs. I talked to uh, Nate from Indiana Fitness Club, and I also talked to Misty from um, Stonehouse, and um, I talked to Ann Hughes from um, the her place. And basically, what what I was gathering is they were doing okay, but with more shutdown and basically employees starting to get sick and they're having to shut down or limit um, interactions again, they were thinking that, yes, it's going to be um, beneficial for another uh, round of uh, basically COVID grant relief. Um, I'm seeing more and more um, businesses now start to hurt with employees being coming sick and um, being forced to quarantine from um, the Department of Health uh, guidelines. So there's just more observations that we're starting to see, you know, within the last few weeks now too. to the Mendel. Um, they've lost quite a bit because they weren't able to take their blue moose uh, truck to different uh, uh, events and their screen printing was hurting because of schools not having all of the extracurricular activities that they normally do. Um, the Opera House had been shut down uh, talked to them, and um, uh, I had talked to Erin Jubriel. Uh, she kind of mentioned that she's come across people that still are a little afraid to come in to her shop, um, just out of fear. So I I believe that our our businesses are in great need of this second round as well. Howdy. Yeah, so uh, I spoke with also Nate. I guess I didn't realize Spencer spoke with Nate with IFC too, but I spoke with Nate. Um, his biggest um, concern was yes, if uh, Governor Holcomb um, tightened down on restrictions and he had to close again, that could be burdensome. Um, another business owner that did not want to be named or identified um, said something similar that if the restrictions were to change, that would be uh, very financially difficult for them. Um, I'd say just I don't I think I think I guess I don't want to speak for everybody but I do feel that there's probably a need um, but I would say that if I had to speak for a lot of businesses probably even further need if um, restrictions were to change again um, I spoke to Walman's Shelby uh, Lisa the owner of the stone house Gerald Fielding of Fields and Jewelry Belinda Weatherwax of the flower shop and Ron Whitaker at Napa um, the consensus I was given was that right now things are good. Um, a few even said things are better because people are staying local to shop, but they all, you know, express a concern that if things do change. Um, most of the ones that I talked to felt like things were okay now, and they would like to see a second round offered maybe next, um, later in the winter or early spring. And I know we were given information that said we had to wrap this up by May 15th, and I wanted to ask about that because the original information that Shane gave us uh, back when he had created this original application with Curtsy on April 14th of 2020, that entire thing said we had 18 months to complete this project. <laughs> so from that timeline, it looks like we have until well into 2021. Um, so I was just wondering, has something changed with the timeline requirement? Gail, I can't answer whether what the original was. All I can tell you is that um, the schedule that was given to us recently by uh, Curpsy is that this grant has to be closed out um, in May, so May of 2021. I know that there is now a second or a, a phase three um, of um, OPRA uh, grants for CARES Act that will be starting up and uh, coming 
into, I think the applications are due mid-January. Uh, that was something that was on the agenda for later. Um, but uh, this particular grant for phase two has a May uh, date. Um, okay. Can you check on that because- um, I have checked on the scale that is what? the case for this grant. So um, the schedule that is given to us by Curpsy, which was in the packet that was sent to all of you, um, is, um, is the dates that are applicable for for this grant. Okay, because what, what Shane originally signed came from OCRA, um, which OCRA required it to be completed within 18 months. So I was wondering if he has changed um, the, the deadline that they want or if something got changed from OCRA as far as the completion date. And I also had a question, I don't know, maybe Mackenzie can help with this. Are, are the business owners going to have to claim this money for tax purposes? Very interesting you asked that. I just spent two days at a tax seminar where basically anything COVID related was unknown until the official publications are released. So it's unclear exactly how stimulus checks are being reported, resilient grant money, all of that's awaiting official IRS publications. So right now to be determined, I'm, I'm, 99% sure they're going to have to report it in some fashion, but whether or not they have to pay tax on it and at the normal tax rate, that that I don't know. We're, we're all waiting yeah. on that. I'm just thinking a $10,000 hit in one year could be detrimental for some businesses um, if we yeah. got money out now. The second um, round would be in 2021, not in 2020. Okay. <laughs> Yes, certain, yeah, <laughs> certainly the two diff different distributions would be in different tax years, but if I was thinking conservatively as a business owner that received this, I would be trying to set aside, you know, maybe at least 20% of it for taxes uh, for the possibility that they're going to have to pay tax on it. And of course, this all depends on their specific situation. If they're, you know, just providing themselves a 1099 if they're incorporated, if they're a partnership. So it's a mess right now and we're, I, I will be anxious to get those publications from the IRS because we have a lot of businesses asking. And the other, the other thought that I had and I had asked the business owners I spoke with about employee retention because the purpose of this grant was for short term working capital, capital for LMI, um, the low moderate income employees. And no one that I spoke with has had to actually lay anybody off. So I don't know if, um, I, I, I think timing on this is gonna be critical to people getting money mm -hmm. um, when they go to create the application. Not that it's a good thing if they have to lay people off, but some of them spoke that probably in the next month or so they might potentially have to do that. Um, so I don't know what, you were thinking Mayor Whirling as far as the timeline to actually make awards? Well, it's spelled out in the document that was sent to council prior to, and uh, it calls for opening the round, um, second round, uh, the week of the 11th. Um, and the, uh, the date for checks to go would be the, um, uh, let me see here. Probably the week of February 1st would be when um, money would hit the account and we could pay the grant recipients unless we choose to do as we did last time and um, pay the grant recipients out of edit a rainy day and then reimburse um, when the um, money comes from Oprah. Hey, this is Mike, I, can you hear me? Yes. I finally got connected. Um, I got in late and I apologize. I talked to three or four business owners here in town and there's a couple of them that said if the, if COVID hits again and they're cut way back, they will probably have to close their business. So I think we need to do it as soon as possible, like we did before, you know, write the checks out of the rainy day fund. And then when we get a check from the state, then we can put it back in there. Um, Cause the business owners are, they're hurting. 
that's what I've heard from them, and I know everybody else probably has too. So I miss some of what you guys said, but I know that they are hurting. If yeah. if I could if I could chime in on um, kind of piggyback on something that uh, President Pro Tem Connor mentioned, just kind of food for thought in the PPP program, um, the payroll program that you could apply to government for, they did have requirements around uh, laying people off. So your forgiveness and of course this is different this is a grant it's not a loan with you know potential forgiveness or or lack thereof but they had uh guidelines to whether or not you could lay people off because a consideration was were these people going to be asking for money for payroll and to assist them and then let go of a bunch of employees and keep that money um to kind of float you know obviously like higher ups in the business so I don't know if that's a requirement of the resilience grant. Unfortunately, I wasn't as involved in this round one. Um, I know you guys don't want to change the requirements, and, and I know it's five thousand dollars. It's great, but it's really probably not a lot in the grand scheme of things when when you're dealing with all these issues. But I don't know if you guys want to consider a requirement of if you get this money, you can't then within you know a certain amount of time just start laying people off. Um. I wanted to, I think that's a good consideration. And I also wanted to speak to what we're gonna be talking to tonight about the mask requirement. I asked the business owners that I spoke with if they were wearing masks, if they were requiring their employees to wear masks, and if they were posting the signage as required, because really this is about not trying to just shut down businesses, about trying to keep them open and keep people safe. Um, and I wanted to ask the council, do you think we need to have something in the application for, for those that I know some some cities are not even considering people who are not following the governor's mandate. If they're not posting signage, if they're not requiring their employees to wear masks, then they're not even eligible for this money. Um, I think it's a small thing to ask to alleviate the number of COVID cases rising in the county. Um, so I'm not sure how you think about that. Well, personally, I think that the business owners are doing the best they can with the mask. I've seen them all. They've got signs up. Um, people are making a choice to not wear a mask or not inside. <clears throat> I know I've gone in and said, do I have to wear a mask? Half the time they say no, but they don't even have them on in these businesses. Um, so I think that's a common sense thing, wearing a mask. I think we should just see, because we don't want to lose these businesses. One of them's a hairdresser at town. She doesn't want to close her new shop. Um, but she says she gets hit again and she has hairdressers, but they're not her employees. That thing we talked about last time. Um, but she's just afraid that if she gets hit again, she's going to have to close it. Um, and she's got to sign up for the mask and all that. So business owners are doing what they're supposed to. It's the citizens that aren't going along with it. So. Yeah. The mask thing, my, uh, I don't want, I, I'm not a big mask fan. I have to wear one. Cody has to wear one too when he goes to work. Um, and they've, they've got their place, but I don't think that should play a part in, well, you don't, you don't enforce the mask thing, so you're not going to be eligible for this grant. Um, we don't want to lose any businesses either. I talked to Valerie. So health office and she said they get up to 25 complaints a day on certain businesses that aren't just posting their signage and I did have a few business owners tell me that they don't have signage on their door and I think that is a common sense thing I would agree that it's common sense I think it's a small thing to ask um, and I, I do have an issue with rewarding people when they're not trying to do everything they can do to knock down the COVID increase in this county it's increasing 25 people per day, according to Valerie. In this county? In this county. Yeah, I, I would disagree with that probably. Well, just check the state's numbers, Mike. So, yes, I know, <laughs> I know. Um, I know, I've been talking to people and I, anyway, that's a whole other subject, how they're mm -hmm. adding those people up. Um, money talks you know so the numbers go up so people get money that's another subject <laughs> but i i don't think we should punish our businesses 
Yes, we should say, okay, you've got to follow the, the state mandates. You got to what the governor says. You got to do these things. Um, but to say, if you don't do it, you're not getting a grant. You'll have to close your business. Then we'll have another empty building in the in the town. That's yeah. the way I look at it. I think it's a choice. It's very simple for them to post the sign. Yes, it is. <clears throat> and they should be doing it. If the governor says do it, they need to do it. Um, and then it's up to the citizens if they put it on or not and go in the building. So that's a whole other subject, too. Mayor Rory really shared at the last board of works meeting, not tonight, um, what the business owners could do as far as trespassing, what their recourse was for people coming in. Um, right. I talked to Brooke McCain today about that kind of stuff. So, yeah. yeah. The only other note I had was that since we did the $100,000 additional appropriation for the edit money this year to be used for that, um, and if we don't do any awarding yet this calendar year, we'll just have to keep in mind to do that again if we're going to use edit money to fund those that don't qualify for the OPRA reimbursement. So they were just a, I had noted there. I have, I have one last, uh, last thought on this. I know that um, there were a couple businesses that you all had um, issues communicating with and getting in touch with um, afterwards. Is there any consideration for adding additional uh, contact information questions or alternate contacts to ensure you guys don't run into that issue again? I don't know um, what all, of course, you know, some of these businesses have locations. I don't know if some are um, not like a storefront wherein you know, you're dealing with like a mailing address, but are we asking for email addresses, telephone numbers, things like that? I believe that's all yep. part of the grant application. Great. Mm -hmm. Did you wish to make it a requirement that um, all of the reports needed to be submitted from round one to be able to qualify for round two? In other words, if I would think. If a business I would think so, yeah. Hand in their receipts, so. would they still be eligible to um, go for a round two funding? Anytime you apply for a and grant, you, you have to follow the guidelines. So mm -hmm. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, I really yeah. agree with that. Too. They need to I turn mean, it in. If they took more than like, you know, two, three weeks to get your paperwork back, yeah, I would say that pretty much disqualifies future grants. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Yep. Should we take this and have a workstation to look at the application and actually take some time to decide if we're okay with it and look at the rubric for scoring? Because it's been quite some time. Um, I know one criticism we got last time was that we kind of rushed the whole issue. Um, and I think that we do have some time. We can have a work session yet this month and just look at the rubric, look at the application and make sure it's what we want before we make it um, available. Because I think you said January 11th you were going to open. That's correct. The, the applications would need to be in by January the 11th. We would have so to have completed applications by January the 11th. Ooh. They're due back in on January 11th? They're yep. due back in on January the 8th. So when were you going to make them available? The document that was sent out to council, uh, do not reply. Um, called for round two to open the week of December the 11th. <coughs> and that's going to start the end of the week. So we don't have time to go over those applications. Again, we did that last spring. And we kind of rushed it last spring because the businesses were hurting. They were in trouble. So we had to kind of get busy. Right. So I was just saying if we want to take some time, we can have a work session in the next week or two and look at the application and look at the rubric and make sure it is what we want, make sure it's worded the way we want, make sure 
and we're all in agreement on how to raise the businesses. I thought we did that last spring. Then we're going to take another week or two. It'll take at least a week or two for all of us to go over those because this is a busy time of year. We're all busy. Um, we're not going to sit down and look at this. No, we're, I don't think we have. I'm talking about just looking at the basic application form and the rubric form and deciding and make sure it's um, there weren't any things from the last time now that we've been through a round of this. We didn't really have any follow up and decide, you know, if we were okay with the application, if we were okay with the rubric, um, if everyone was in agreement on how to score, we kind of all just did our own individual thing. I think it would be helpful for us to have a work session so we're all on common ground. Um, we may have to push the timeline and back a week or two to get the applications out. Um, I think we have some time to do that. Gail, if I could recommend that you first uh, look at the application. Uh, I understand that you might want a work session to go over the rubric and how you're going to score. Uh, but if you could you know, review the application, see if there, you've mentioned a few things that need to, to change. Um, I'd be happy to add the things that, have, that you've already mentioned that you would like to change the 25 uh, the full-time equivalent rather than 25 employees, um, perhaps a, uh, a mask requirement, although we'll need to determine whether you want that in or not. Um, it must have complied with um, the requirements of round one in terms of getting your um, um, you know, receipts in your final report, final grant report then. Um, I can certainly write that up, send it out, and see if there are any changes, additional changes that need to be made. And then if you have a work session to talk about the rubric and how you're going to score, mm -hmm. um, you've got really until January the 8th to, right. begin, to get that part done. Would that be acceptable? Um, I, I think that would be fine because we kind of talked about the application tonight. Um, I, I just think it would be beneficial for us all to be on the same page and make some determinations about how we're scoring before we do that again. So yes, the answer to your question is yes. So one of the other things that um, I think was an item for discussion, um, we, if it, all of the, our applicants are eligible for the um, um, OPRA funds for low to moderate income. We could give 22 grants out of the remaining uh, funding from OPRA. Last time we had 36 applicants. Um, do we wish to fund beyond that 22 number? And and if so, I think you just mentioned edit, and that could certainly be used to uh, to fund any that are, are not um, applicable for LMI. Um, do we wish to pay first um, out of edit and or rainy day and then get reimbursement? I would be in favor of that. Because if we wait, then that's just prolong. That's somebody said a little bit, a bit ago about the business owners. It's hard for them. They're they they've got to deal with this on a day to day basis. How they're going to manage. Um, so if we can help them first and then reimburse it later, that, I think that would be beneficial for our town. Mayor Worling, do you know if we put the OPRA funds into rainy day as a reimbursement, does that count for the 10% that we can put in rainy day? I do not know. Leanne, do you know? I would say no. <coughs> and because that's it, that's actually, when you go to rainy day, that's actually set by the budget, by what you spent out of the budget and remaining funds. So that's something that you committed to. Thank you. Uh, 
where is the council on the, the amount? Are, are we wanting to leave it at a potential $5,000 cap or are we gonna go less than that or more than that? Where, where does everybody- I would probably, I'd probably leave it there. I'd leave it, I'd leave it at the 5,000, up to 5,000. I agree. Okay. Same. Okay. And then where is the council on funding um, businesses that don't qualify, uh, qualify for OCRA reimbursement out of potentially rainy day or ed? I'd say that if we can take it out of edit, we got more than enough money in edit. I would agree with that. So um, in January, we'd have to have it on the agenda or actually have a public hearing for an additional appropriation. Appropriation, yeah. Because if we won't get to this until January, the money that's in there now that we appropriated this year will have to stay in edit. Um, so it's just a formality, but we will have to have a public hearing for an additional appropriation. Is there a dollar amount that the council wants to consider so that can get advertised? Mayor Whirling, what did we actually need above and beyond the Oprah money? Beyond the Oprah money in the first round, I believe it was 76. Do you have that number handy, Leanne? No, I don't, but I, it seems to me like it was, it was either 77 or was it 79? Am I doing too much? It's under 80. Do we want to just put 80,000 advertisement for 80,000 for the appropriation, appropriation? Either that or if we use rainy day, that the money will be there next year because we budgeted rainy day money. I'd prefer to use it out of edit, like you said, Spencer. I'd prefer not to use the rainy day money. How much money do we, how much money do we have left in edit right now? So that's about 100. And on the sheet. Say again. It's about seven hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, and it's got quite a bit of money in it. I say let's let's do the eighty thousand out of edit, do an appropriation out of there. We did. What, um, we did a hundred thousand dollars last time, and I I do think we might need to consider that more businesses will apply this time around. You've changed the criteria to FTE, so you're probably going to have a few additional businesses. Yeah. yeah, I agree with Gail. I if we did twenty two grants. And, and we've got 36 now with the 5,000, you're already at 70. And that's not adding in the new, new the new businesses that we make get to qualify. So we want to make it 100,000 from? 100 to 1,000 again? Yeah, make it 100,000. Okay. So we're good with that, Council? Sounds good. Okay. Is this something we can hold with a public hearing for the next council meeting as well? Hold it before the next council meeting, so it's on the same day. Yeah. Okay. So it would be that first meeting in January. Is that yep. what you're it'll thinking? Be, yeah. It'll be at the beginning of the meeting. I think the only thing that isn't clear in my mind is um, with the application. I'm not. I'm not so much wanting to push about the mask thing, because I know that is not always within their realm of control. But I, I do think that posting the sign on your door, since it is a mandate that masks are required, my personal preference would that be that that would be part of the, um, the application. What does the council think about that? I'll say that the actual enforcement of wearing mask is not up to the businesses. I really don't think we have a, a say in that as far as businesses or even law enforcement for that matter. Um, I know the Department of Health is going around, they're finding businesses, um, you know, the simple violation of not having your sign 